Hi guys, Gabriel here and there's Lizzie from uh, Magic Tennis Coaching. Today I'm trying to answer a question which I've been asked many times by uh, the parents of some of my students who want to know how long and uh, how hard the students should train in order to become good in tennis either as a recreation or as a professional player. Uh, to be honest, sometimes this question is quite uh, specific and some um, parents want to know exactly how many hours per week they have to train uh, improving the sh uh, shot skills, how many hours uh, physical training, how many hours playing matches or stuff like this. To be honest, to answer to this question uh, very accurately, I have to discuss the each student situation um, because that depends what the student wants, actually what are the goals uh, of that student regarding tennis um, and the style of the student, what he likes more or less uh, in training, I mean more physical training or more playing. Uh, that's very important so as a coach you as a coach as a parent as parent as a parent you need to find out what kind of training and uh, what's the percentage of each of these elements physical training um, shots mental training watching tennis playing tennis what's the percentage of each of these elements for that particular student um there are uh, many students who just want to become uh, very good in tennis, maybe better than their friends, or sometimes just to uh, to be good uh, good enough to play a particular friend who maybe is better. Um, that's one reason why some people are doing uh, tennis. Uh, so it's a social part which is very important, and sometimes. Other students, they even they are six, seven uh, years old. They are thinking they want to be the best. They want to beat everyone, so their goals might be uh, different. So they want to become uh, professional players. If that will happen, we don't know from the beginning. You never want to judge anyone when it's too young. I don't uh, say anything uh, before. Someone, somebody has got some years of tennis and great strokes and is going to be 13, 14, then you know that there might be something. Um, anyway, it's very important. So the number of hours to train and which kind of training to do, it uh, have to be um, customized for each student. Um, there are uh, some students who doesn't like uh, training very hard or training physically training on a court for too long or off court but um, that doesn't mean they will never become professional players they, they still enjoy a lot playing tennis and they learn uh, most of their skills by playing tennis in that case you need to give that particular uh, student more uh, challenging challenges by playing tournaments or even the training session have to be different uh, not just feeding balls and hitting shots uh, have to combine more uh, with um, a game style of uh, coaching uh, so it's so often just uh, put that uh, student or a group of students to playing to each other give give them some um, tasks to do and you as a coach just intervene time to time and say oh that was great that was very good try to do it this way and this way or try not to do that anymore because that's doing your it's creating problems or even technique wise try to do this follow through in different ways or uh, use the body differently and that kids and that student are very open to discussion if they play and then you correct what's wrong while they're playing because they are doing what they love most and they are happy to correct something which they are letting them down during playing so uh, it's easy that way to um, help that kind of student to improve 
This is actually um, the case of Roger Federer, which from what I understood, he never lied, even today, he's not very big fan of, um, of training off court, uh, doing uh, physical exercises or training shots, just hitting, hitting, hitting until until is very good, like uh, was the case of Andre Agassi. He was training a lot uh, outside of the matches to improve. Um, Federer, he was always interesting to play, uh, to play uh, lots of matches and learn from matches and try to be problem solver on a court, find solution and uh, twist his shots and try to make it work for all the situation he was put in during the matches. Um, um, so that's why it's very important uh, to customize the training and the amount of physical training and matches and uh, playing um, shots and improving shots for each specific student. Um, differently otherwise he can lose interest and uh, he think it's too hard it's not what he likes and actually everybody can develop in different ways with different uh, tools using different tools and they can reach the same uh, the same uh, results so as I said Andrea Gassi was very different than Roger Federer and Roger Federer very different than uh, Nadal the way they are training uh, um, even even though uh, Federer uh, was doing uh, very good things during the match, which he never he never doing during the training. That's why it's funny enough when I see when I am seeing on YouTube or some other places um, some people analyzing um, Federer shots while he is training, so not during the matches. Um, because that's not the right way in his case, because he never trained in the same way or warming up before the match in the same way he's playing the match. So his shots are not the greatest shots in the world when he's playing uh, before the match, he does warm up, uh, he's doing lots of shortcuts, uh, everything looks like he's bored, so he doesn't have that intensity, which you can see uh, during Nadal training uh, before matches. He's playing the same if it's uh, during the match or before the match. He's hitting the same way, the same intensity. So really, if you want to analyze the shot of Nadal, that doesn't matter if it's during the match or uh, during um, warming up before the match. Uh, but it's always best to see what everybody is doing during the match. But I just give, gave you two different examples to different people. Uh, learning differently, they both or all three uh, these guys, Agassi, um, Federer, and Nadal, they achieve the best in tennis. They are training differently. So, giving you exactly a recipe and giving you the number of hours and uh, per week, per day, um, it's very hard because it's not matching everybody's expectation or style of training. I understand when somebody is involved in a tennis academy, it's very well structured, uh, it's like school, so nobody's asking and uh, the kids just doing what they are asked to do. They might not like everything, uh, so even in that case, the coaches should adjust a little the time for, for different students a little differently. But generally speaking, how you train, you have to customize your training according to your style of learning. You learn more from drills and feeding balls. You learn more from playing, from being on a court, being in the middle of the battle. Uh, I hope I gave you some ideas how to judge, how to uh, create a schedule for your students and for your, uh, for your son or daughter. Um, and actually, they will just, my answer I think is just uh, give you, giving you a guidance and make you more to think 
and come with your own plan which should be the best actually plan which anybody can bring to you you know the best your uh, kid or you know the best your student as a coach uh, you need to be always in contact with the student get the feedback and create the, the best training program for that particular student I wish you all the best and see you next time when I hope I can answer to some other question and help you with uh, uh, tennis development. Gabriel and Slezzy, bye-bye.